So what we're looking at inside of this video is this intuitive definition of a limit. And we're also going to be looking at the notation for a limit. All right. The notation can is very new. And so consequently, we're going to have to like put that together with this new idea of the limit. All right. And that's going to be one of the key things that we do inside of this particular section. OK, so the limit, the notation for the limit is as follows. Let f of x is defined when x is near the number a. So we say the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals l. And that's actually written literally as the limit of f as x approaches a is l. OK, and that's what we say. a is some value on the x-axis. l is some value on the y-axis. All right, so the a's here are x values and the l's here are y values. OK, so if we're thinking about it from a Cartesian plane perspective, that's how we're thinking about it. Now, what that means is if the values of f get close to L as X gets closer to A, then we say that the limit of L, the, that the limit is L. OK, so let me say that again. If the values of f get close to L as X gets closer to A, then we say that the limit is L. OK, so let's take a look at an example. All right, we'll do this graphically. Um, to kind of like show you something very simple, uh, simple to, to kind of think about. So let's say that x, uh, f of x equals 3x plus 7. And we want to know that what is the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x. So we're going to draw a graph of this. Okay. Okay. And then what I know, all right, so boom, all right. And so here's 1, 2, 3. Okay. Go a little bit further. So here's three on the x-axis. So limit as x approaches three. So there's three. And then, well, I know that um, f of three is going to equal three times three plus seven, okay, which is 16. So we're just going to have 16 up here, okay. And all right, let's say that this is seven. So let's say, here we go. There we go. Sixteen, here's seven. All right. So there's our graph. Now the idea of a limit is is what happens as I move. Let's use red to represent in the x direction. As I move in the x direction, okay, towards three, okay. So as I move towards three, right. Let's first say as I go from the negative to the positive, okay. So I'm moving towards three. What's happening towards to the f's? Well, what we see is, is that, okay, and this one we'll put in blue, we can see that I'm going to be increasing towards 16, All right? So as the x's change, go towards three, I could see that as we go negative to positive, that I start increasing towards 16, right? Okay. Now, if I look at the other direction, all right, which is actually also going to be really important for working with limits. In the other direction, as x approaches 3, okay, right? So as we go down this way, what's happening to our f's? All right, well, you can see they're decreasing. Our f's are decreasing down towards 16, all right? That's basically what we're saying when we say something is a limit, all right? In this case, it's pretty obvious. You're like, well, yeah, just plug it into the function, of course. As x gets closer to 3, what's going to happen to f of x? It's going to get closer to 16. Duh, because that's what f of x is at 3. Okay, totally. Well, that's kind of the idea. Now, the thing is, is that it starts to get a little bit more tricky as we start to work with different examples. All right, so let's take a look at some different examples. So let's suppose that I have this. What is the limit as x approaches negative 1 of x plus 1 times x squared minus 1? Well, if I go in... So f of negative 1 is going to equal negative 1 plus 1 over negative 1 squared minus 1. This is now 0 over 0, which is not 0. This is undefined. So in this case, I can't just simply like plug the, plug the value back in and give me what my limit is. In this case, I'm going to have to do something different. All right. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to utilize a function. Uh, um, a program called Desmos in order to do some graphing with this to show you what it what it's going to look like. Okay. 
So this is Desmos.com. It's a program that we'll be using uh, throughout the course. It uh, actually turns out it's really great for working on the web. There you go. It's under, you literally are going to look it up as Desmos.com. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Start Graphing. We're often going to be using this one. If not, I'll tell you how to get to what we need. And what I'm going to do now is in this place, I'm going to choose, I'm going to say Y equals, okay, and in parentheses, um, X minus one, or excuse me, X plus one divided by, and this is going to be um, X and the division, you could just use the, the slash for the division, caret squared, that's a big X, I don't want big X, I want little X, X squared minus one, okay? So now we have x plus one over x squared minus one, all right? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at it and I'm gonna see, oh, well, let's see negative one. So here's x equals negative one, okay? Now, if I start moving over here, coming over from the negative side, and I start approaching, right, I start getting closer and closer and closer to negative one, what I see is I see that my values, right, they're kind of my f values, Right, okay, I gotta click on them again. My F values are getting closer and closer and closer to 0.5. So I can kind of see that, ah, look at that. Okay, ah, they're getting closer to 0.5. But when I get to negative one, it's actually undefined, right? But on the other side, if I came up from the positive end and started moving towards negative one, my F values still would get closer and closer to 0.5, right? Okay, until I finally hit negative one, Somewhere in there. Well, it ends up being undefined, okay? So what I could see is actually that I do in fact have a limit. As X gets closer to one, or excuse me, yeah, as X gets closer to one, F of X gets closer to 0.5. We end up being undefined at one, that's fine, all right? That's totally okay. It's not gonna be a problem for us, right? As long as we get closer and closer to kind of like some defined point. There it is, negative one undefined, right? But on either side, what we can see is, is that we're actually at negative 0.5, okay? So that kind of gives us like, it gives us a really clear sense of what exactly that limit's gonna be, okay? So here's our graph and what you can see, right? Okay, I'm gonna put right here, we ended up having, we had having a hole. Okay, we had, ended up having it be undefined at the particular point for x equals one, right? But what we definitely did see is that as we got close to one, okay, from both sides, right? That what we got was we got a value on the graph that got closer and closer to 0.5. So the limit as x approaches negative one of x plus one over x squared minus one ends up equaling one half or negative one half, excuse me. Right, you can see that that's exactly what's happening. Now, one way we can do this is utilizing a graph, right? Desmos makes it really easy because we can kind of see how the, the numbers move. Another way that we can do this is utilizing a table, okay? So I used Excel in order to generate a table in which I basically got some values that got closer and closer and closer to negative one, right? So you can see I started out like one half away from negative one, and then all the way down to one one thousandth away from negative one on either side. So on the positive side and on the negative side. And what you could see is, yeah, at negative one were undefined, but on either side of it, as you're looking, okay, you can see that this is gonna be negative 0.5, okay? And this is also gonna be close, getting close or approaching negative 0.5 on both sides. Right, so what's happening when we draw this table is we actually see that um, as x, our x values get close to negative one, our f values are gonna get close to um, negative 0.5, okay? By the way, basically what I did in order to generate this, if you're thinking about it doing it by hand, which you have to do for your, for your homework, is what you wanna do, or you're using a calculator, or even Excel, is you've got x, your x values here, and these are the values for your function that you put into the table, 
All right? And I'll put up some uh, put up some videos that'll show you how to do that. Okay. So basically, our table shows us exactly the same thing. You know what? As x gets closer and closer and closer to negative one, f of x gets closer and closer and closer to negative 0.5. Now, sometimes we can't determine the value of the limit. All right. And, and what it is, is basically what happens if we get really, really close to a particular value. Okay. So like, let's say, for example, I have this sine of pi over x now, and I want to know the limit as x approaches zero. So as I'm getting closer, here's zero, x equals zero here. Okay. As I get closer to x equals zero, right, what's supposed to be happening here, you can't really see it, is we actually end up with our values, they're fluctuating, right, okay? The values for f of x are fluctuating, fluctuating, fluctuating. As I get close, yes, some of them are gonna be in the zero range, but others are not. So those ones are gonna be in the one range, okay? You know, that's kinda, it ends up getting kinda problematic. We can't actually define a limit here because there's really no way for me to tell what's actually happening to the limit as x approaches zero of sine of pi over x as it gets closer to zero, okay, right? There's no way to tell. So this is undefined. If when we um, try to find the limit, We are unable to we can say the limit does not exist and this is valid we've got this definition for a limit or we're going to have an intuitive definition for the limit intuitively we look at this and we go well is it one is it zero is it 0.5 is it the square root of three over two Right? What is it exactly? I don't know. Right? And so consequently, what I get from that is, is well, it looks like the limit's undefined. Right? How we might see that if we had a table, we'd have a table in which, you know, we'd see just some fluctuations. We wouldn't see the real smooth pattern progressing towards a particular point. Instead, we'd see something that looks just all over the map as we go closer and closer and closer. Right? It would be all over the place. Our Fs would be all different values. Okay? And that's what we say when we say that a limit, in fact, does not exist. Okay? So part of your reading assignment is going to be helping you to understand this particular dilemma. It's the kind of thing that, like, you know, I could show you 100 examples. You're just going to be like, how do I know it doesn't exist? you got to think about it. you got to see some different examples, work with some different things, think about it a little bit, and that will actually help you to understand what happens when a limit does not exist. Okay? All right. So this... Uh, completes our little introductory lesson or lecture on what exactly a limit is. We'll do a lot more work on these inside of class.